In this screencast, we're going to be talking about how digital designs are physically implemented on programmable logic devices. It's all fair and well learning how to program these devices, but we don't just want to treat them as black boxes that we can throw code at. Getting a low-level appreciation of what's going on inside the chip will in turn give you a better understanding of what your designs are actually compiling to and in turn make you a better engineer. So as mentioned in a previous screencast, both SPLDs and CPLDs use and or array logic to build digital designs. Wires are connected either by fuse or reprogrammable technology in order to build the SOP expressions for each logic element. This is a typical example of an array logic diagram. We can see that we have two inputs, A and B, and their complements, not A and not B, which can be connected through the array to four AND gates. The resultant terms of the AND gates are connected to a single four input OR gate. A macro cell with this array configuration will be able to generate a SOP output of up to four terms, ignoring any device specific features such as shared or parallel expanders. Using a diagram like this, we can visualize which cells in the array will be made or broken depending on the expression we need to generate. Let's take a look at an example. We want the array to generate a SOP function of AB or A not B or not AB or not A not B. To display this, we can mark on the diagram where junctions need to be made in the array to connect the columns to the rows. Note that I've reduced the number of lines for each AND gate to a single line with a slash through it to indicate a bus. This is simply to make the diagrams easier to read and is perfectly valid for display. So we can mark each junction which needs to be made with a cross. For the first AND gate, we'll cross at A and B. For the second, A and not B, and so on, generating our final SOP expression. We can also conduct this process in reverse to work out the SOP expression for a given array. We can see that the first row has junctions at A, B and C, so our first product term is A, B, C. The second row has junctions at A and not B, and the third at not A and not C. In this example, we don't have anything in the last row, so our output only has three terms, A, B, C, or A, not B, or not A, not C. FPGAs use lookup tables instead of AND OR arrays. A lookup table is a type of memory that can be programmed to produce SOP expressions. So instead of manually programming links between gates, we program each lookup table with what is essentially a truth table for its inputs. Lookup tables consist of a number of memory cells equal to 2 to the power n, where n is the number of inputs to the table. Due to this exponential growth in memory size, the number of inputs is usually small. A typical FPGA lookup table will have either three or four inputs and will make use of expanders for more complex expressions. These memory cells are programmed to replicate the truth table for a desired function, with this program pattern being known as the lookup table mask. As we program this mask instead of using gate arrays, there's no hard limit to the number of terms in the resultant SOP expression. For this reason, FPGAs are capable of handling far more complex digital designs within fewer resources, and only require expanders to increase the number of inputs for an expression. Taking a look at the example here, we have a three input lookup table that we want to program to produce the expression not A, not B, not C, or A, B, not C, or A, not B, C, or A, B, C. So we need to generate the lookup table mask. Inside the lookup table, there's a memory cell for representing every possible min term of the output expression, with our first input acting as our least significant bit. By taking the cells representing the min terms in our desired expression and setting their output to 1, the lookup table generates those expressions in the output function. We then set all other cells to 0 and transpose the contents to a single hexadecimal value giving us our lookup table mask. We can also perform this in reverse, determining a SOP expression from a given lookup table mask. We'll convert our mask to binary and then transpose it into the memory cells, taking our first min term as our least significant bit of the mask. We can then create our SOP expression based on the cells which are set to 1. 
Note that this expression is unlikely to be presented in its simplest form, so you may have to perform some simplification on it to arrive at the most appropriate Boolean representation. Similar to CPLDs, lookup tables in FPGAs can expand their number of inputs by routing the output of one table to another through either a local or global interconnect. Adjacent logic elements can sometimes also make use of a dedicated expansion interconnect, further optimizing their resources. Depending on the individual device, lookup tables may have a dedicated input for expansion, but it is more likely to be multiplex with the normal input. This image shows an RTL representation of the logic elements on the device we'll be using this semester. You can see that we've got a four input lookup table, the output of which can either be passed directly out of the element and into the interconnect matrix, or passed into some registered logic through a multiplexer. You can see here that input C can be set to use different signals depending on the status of two multiplexers. It can either act as a standard input, take the output of the registered logic section, or take the resultant expression of the adjacent logic element through the dedicated expander line. During this lab session, we'll be writing some HDL and synthesizing it to hardware, so we'll get a first-hand look at how FPGAs translate digital circuits into these lookup table formats.